Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Pete Shinnick. And Coach, Tigers last Saturday, first home game, first CAA game against Monmouth, and you couldn't have asked for a better start to that football <laughs> game. Monmouth gets the ball, you force a turnover, go in, score a touchdown, and then the Lord said you have to take a pause. <laughs> Well, yeah, extremely proud of our guys for, I mean, how we came out. You know, we've, I think, uh, two weeks in a row, um, you know, we've started with a great kickoff cover. We call that our hit squad. Um, and they came down, got a great kick, great coverage. And to start, you know, to set your opponent up, you know, negative of the 25-yard line, you're, you're winning the field position battle. And that's something that we talk about a lot. Uh, they had a couple of nice plays there. Then we settled in. Then we got some pressure. We got the turnover. And boom, two plays later, uh, DK James scores uh, the first touchdown for us of the uh, year and first home touchdown as well. And I was like, all right, we're rolling, feeling good. Yeah, and then we're lining up, and it's like, wait a minute, we got to do what? <laughs> so a lightning delay. And what do you do during that time period where, you know, guys have gone out, they've warmed up, they've played a little bit, and now they got to go back to the locker room? Yeah, the good, the good thing for us is uh, Thursday's practice was actually delayed two hours. And then we only got out for about 25 minutes on Thursday, and then we got delayed again, and we ended up sending them home, doing a little more work on Friday. So we had been through that. And really it's just, you, you know, this generation I think handles this well because they're on their phones, they're looking at scores, they're doing something. So, I mean, that 30 minutes – isn't like it was, you know, 20 years ago where everybody's kind of staring at each other in the locker room. Uh, they handled it well. And, again, I, I thought we came out of that pretty well because then, you know, we kick off, we get a stop, we get a field goal. I, you know, I feel like we're playing really good football. Um, you know, and then, you know, we, we give up a fourth and two, uh, the long run for the touchdown. And I felt like that was kind of the start of our guys just going, okay, hey, wait a minute. We knew Monmouth was a really good football team. And, I mean, they're one of the better offenses in our conference. Uh, they did a great job the week before against, uh, you know, a group of five uh, team. And so we knew we'd have our hands full. Um, and I was, I was, you know, I was pleased with how we were playing. We just, you know, needed to string together more consistent plays in the first half. And, uh, you know, we're down 14-10. But I felt like if we would have strung together a few more consistent plays, would have been where we wanted to be. The one thing you did not do against Maryland that unfortunately came up in this game was the turnovers, where you turn the ball over, and coaches always hate turnovers. There, <laughs> but there are some turnovers that are worse than others. You know, if a quarterback throws a bomb on third and 19 and you were going to punt anyway, that's one thing. But, you know, when you fumble when you're on their side of the field, yeah. it, it costs a lot more. Well, yeah, <clears throat> the first one, very unfortunate. Uh, we had a gadget play. Uh, we felt very good about that. And I think if we would have thrown it quicker, DK probably scores and, you know, cuts inside there. We threw it a little late, which was a little bit of a different rotation of, of what we've seen. We throw an interception on the one yard line. So we, we have a great drive and we're getting ready to take the lead and we're getting ready to put ourselves, you know, in a great spot. And that happens. Uh, extremely unfortunate, obviously. Um, and then, you know, we fumbled a punt on the 40-yard line. Um, it was a weird punt. It was. It was awkward. We knew that was coming. We've been practicing it all week. And really, I think, you know, I think Lucas looked up, saw some green grass, felt like he had an opportunity to, to go, took his eye off the ball for a second, and that's typically what happens. Uh, we also could have had a little better blocking, and I think if we would have had a little better blocking, you know, he would have been able to recover it. Uh, those two, obviously he threw the interception as well, those two really, I mean, changed, uh, you know, kind of the complexion of what was taking place. Because I, I, I feel like if we score uh, on the drive, get points on the drive that we threw the interception on, we're going to be right there. And then the last one's just unfortunate, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, going back and talking to, you know, a couple different people, you know, winning, winning a game with four turnovers uh, that's a very difficult task. It's a very difficult thing to overcome. And, um, you know, unfortunately, the last two resulted in the last 14 points uh, of the game. I felt like our defense was playing really well. Uh, take away two plays here or there, and I think they're in great shape. You give them those two turnovers right there, that field position. Uh, really, three of the turnovers resulted in 21 points for them. So difficult to, uh, to handle in that situation. All right, well, that leads me right into this week as you will take on Morgan State, a team that is 1-1, one and one, and I know in their minds they think they should easily be 2-0 and oh, as they were leading Akron with a minute to go and they turned it over and Akron uh, picked up a fumble and ran it in for a touchdown. But this is a team on defense 
that has only allowed 99 yards total in the first two games. They've got 11 sacks, and they have four interceptions. This is a heck of a defense you're going up against yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a fantastic defense, and really uh, their, defense, uh, their defense won the Richmond game, uh, and their defense won, uh, won the Akron game. And so their offense lost the Akron game for us, uh, for them, I should say. Um, and they're, like you said, they're beating Akron and game over. And uh, unfortunately for them, their back fumbles on the nine-yard line. Akron scoops and scores. And that was right after Morgan had, uh, um, Akron was driving and Morgan State created an interception in the end zone. That's how they got the ball uh, down there. So very impressed with what they're doing. They should easily be 2-0. and um, and you know they're gonna they're gonna be uh, an amazing opponent. I think for you know it's their first home game. They've been on the road for two weeks. Uh, the Battle of Baltimore. They get to host it. Uh, probably the best Morgan team that uh, we've seen uh, in a long time. Much improved from the team that uh, I watched a year ago. Uh, and obviously their defense speaks for itself. I mean what they've been able to do and. Uh, create turnovers. I think. I think they got. Five what is it that they're off. doing on the? What was it? They 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 hit you hard. They're always in the right place. They're very rarely out of position. Uh, all their guys know uh, what they need to be doing and where they need to be or where they need to be. They're all in sync. I mean, you really have eleven guys playing in sync, getting after it. Um, and they have they've had some great hits. They've created a lot of uh, fumbles. They've done a really really good job defensively. And then offensively, they've got some weapons. Uh, I think they got a really you know a couple really good running backs, a couple really good wide receivers. Uh, they'll throw the deep ball extremely well. They'll throw the screen really well. Uh, their offense has just turned the ball over a few times as well, which is and they've used three quarterbacks. They have. They have. Uh, all three of them have played uh, at multiple times. Uh, there's typically a little bit of a rotation. One will start, one will get the middle portion, and one will end. Uh, but they all have a unique skill set. One throws a little better than other. Uh, one runs the ball a little better than other. So you're really kind of preparing for three different people uh, and three different uh, offensive uh, types. How do you do that from the defensive standpoint when, when every time they bring in a quarterback, he's got a different skill set and you've got to change on the fly? Yeah, you really, you, you, and our defense, I, I think, does a fantastic job formationally as well as personnel-wise, identifying what people do and how they do it. So uh, you talk to them about this guy's strengths is this, this guy's strengths is this, and, you know, uh, this guy might be the better runner, but he can still throw the ball if you don't cover anybody. This guy might be the better thrower, but he can still pull on the zone read and do that. So you talk about what their strengths are and what their tendencies are. And, you know, it's like anything else. You know, typically you're going to face two or three running backs. You're going to play, you're going to, uh, you know, get three or four wide receivers. So you got to learn their tendencies. Just happens to be the guy behind the center, you know, snapping, uh, getting the snaps. Speaking of using uh, three running mm -hmm. backs, you used three running backs extensively this past week for the first time. Yeah, very happy. Uh, we, we didn't have Tyrell. Uh, Green the first game, so very happy to get him uh, situated and get all that worked out so that he could be with us. Uh, I think we've got three really unique running backs that, uh, you know, can really get done everything that we want and that we need. And uh, we didn't run the ball uh, as well as I would have liked, but those guys, part of that was we gave up a couple sacks uh, that affected, I think, our rushing yards, but those guys were averaging four yards a carry. Um, we got to get a couple of explosive plays out of them. We got to get some of the secondary blocks so that uh, they can get downfield and get going. Um, you know, I, I, I think with Diego, you know Anytime he can get to that second level, it's going to be exciting. Devin Matthews probably had one of the better 13-yard runs that I've seen. Just a lot of sheer will and dragging people and pulling people and getting there. Uh, and I think you started to see what Tyrell could do. Um, and we're going to get him more and more involved. And it's, we're, we're excited about that. All right. Well, it all happens Saturday night, 6 o'clock from Hughes Stadium. Gordy and I will have the call for you starting at 545 on TowsonTigers.com. So for the head coach of the Tigers, Pete Shinnick, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Football Report.